Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sushil Chopra. On behalf of the Institutions Innovation Council cell of IMT College of Management, today we are here uh, to discuss on a very, very important topic. And the topic is dealing with innovation and a startup ecosystem enablers, especially in Indian context, right? So from that perspective, I'm really privileged and honored to get this opportunity to discuss on this and throw some light whatever we have. And uh, I think let us make this session very interactive. So with this audience, uh, during the question answer session or whatever it is, let us make it interactive so that it is really having a meaningful you know, discussion. So just uh, to start up this particular situation, we already know there is a lot of focus on innovation and startup ecosystem, especially in India, right? Innovation we all understand because in Indian context, you see you know, different sectors, different industries have different products and services. And without innovation, we cannot survive and sustain any business. So for sustenance of any business, innovation is the key driver. And those who could not innovate, they are out of the market. For example, Nokia phones, everybody knows. Even out of you all, how many of having Nokia phones right now? The answer itself is a clear indication of lack of innovation in the market at right time, at the right time, and right space in the market. Because of that absence, it could not happen. And the results are there. Somebody else who is more creative, more innovative will definitely be placed in the market. And that is the irony but a fair fact. So from that perspective, uh, since a couple of years, especially in Indian context, there is a lot of focus on the innovation and startup ecosystem. And here we are going to discuss the enablers. So what are the enablers? Basically, enablers are all the driving factors who are always supporting any purpose and cause related to innovation or stuff. Okay. So what are the key elements which are powering Indian innovation ecosystem? So they are at different levels. Maybe at local level, at regional level, at the state level, and at the national level. So, ecosystem is at every level because you all know that proudly we can say that India is hosting the largest youth population across the world. And that is giving us a lot of insights and a lot of courage and conviction to move forward that we have tremendous potential to emerge as a global leader or to evolve as a global innovation hub across India. And really we can add value and contribute a lot in terms of product and services which are superior in the solution, which are really addressing the ground level problem of the people of the society. Because if you see, across the society, the problems are continuously evolving and emerging in different sectors, be it ed tech, be it health tech, be it fintech, uh, or any industry. The problems are that the real ingredients to start with any innovation. Because innovation is what? It is different from invention, right? The innovation is improvising either the process, or any product, or any features, or upgrading it. And that is innovation. And then, it means leading it to the commercial aspect where uh, we can have better or enhanced value proposition across the market segments. Right? So from that perspective, we have different you know, support system at local level, at uh, regional level, state level, and national level. I think you all know that there is an MSME, that is Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises which is driving the small business. 
and there is a fixed criteria and there is an online portal which is uh, supporting the entire ecosystem at small business level. Because a small business, micro level business, medium level business and of course large scale business. The large scale business is definitely not part of the MSME sector. MSME is focusing large volume, that's why we want to you know, encourage and uh, create a support system which is very, very strong and that is really going to help and expand this uh, dream of becoming a global hub of innovation and of course more success in startups which are mushrooming all across the world. Because that is a big challenge in perspective of you know, Make in India, Startup in India, Startup in India, so many programs which are going around uh, a decade back. And, uh, there are a lot of you know, improvised uh, machinery and the growth engine, but still, on ground we can see there is a tremendous possibility of continuous improvement through different tools, techniques, and the latest technology adaptation. Because till we adopt the latest tools and technology, and also do the adequate market research before launching any product or solution or the service in the market. Why it is so important? Because generally we see uh, there is a huge competition to start up anything. But just to start up anything needs a lot of BOMO. Starting from design thinking process, you all know the design thinking process. It is a scientific and structured approach to reach to a situation and stage where we have the minimum viable product or service which is marketable, which is acceptable by the society and the market as a business product and service. So in the design thinking process, why it is so important to adopt because it is start, the first stage itself is an empathize. Why empathizing is so important? Till we understand the pain points, the concerns and issues of the main public or the end user of the product and service, we cannot, you know, incorporate those, you know, feel factors and customer experience to excellent level. Because today market is based on the feel factor customer experience, the consumer experience, the end user experience. Because those who are not taking care of the end user experience, the customer experience and the product and service, utility level, in terms of features, in terms of whatever it is, it is really, really, very really difficult to survive as a scale. And that is the reason, unfortunately, more than 80-85% startups are getting failed in India, even after decade long continuous efforts to different you know uh, government machinery at national state and local level. The reason is no adequate homo. Apart from that, no adequate funding, a lot of bureaucratic processes are there which are hindering you know the termination of you know the end results. Even though there is a lot of improvement in terms of the processes, but this thing has been simplified. And uh, you know, online portal is there where anybody can register a calculation or enterprise based on their uh, business case, based on their uh, project plan, how justified and how strong and uh, good it is so that it is really having a future, a future sustainability which can ensure profit margin over a period of time. So initially, the innovation and the startup, they have to go hand in hand because any startup without the concept and implementation of the innovative approach, the creative approach, which is the key ingredient of entrepreneurship, are in the journey by anyone. You cannot create an impact which is, and you cannot create a difference because in the market there are so many solutions already there. But how you can pitch in and create an impact and create a difference where the 
really depend on uh, impact variety and a lot of concepts which are really have a lot of meaning. For example, till the pullover was there in the market. What was the situation? Can you just imagine? But somebody has thought innovatively and came out with some kind of business model and of course business plan and the implementation of the business plan across not only India, I think across the globe this concept is very, very useful. And you see the users, you see the customer experience and how it has created a tremendous impact, positive impact. And at the same time, whatever customer feedback has been there from time to time, they have continuously improvised their services, their methodology, their tools and techniques, their applications, at software level and every level, right? Because then only they are sustaining them after these many years. And there are, of course, other competitions. And competition is, of course, you know that this is the key because monopoly is not at all, you know, possible nowadays because in India especially, we have tremendous good potential. Everybody is looking for some or the other, you know, entrepreneurship kind of, you know, concept where a uh, startup or any business concept, everybody wants to be a job provider, not job seekers, because it's still this concept of transforming from job seekers to job provider is still emerging and a lot of things are in a lot of traction going on and I hope in the future and the coming days definitely there will be a lot of improvement in this area. Because job seekers is a game. It doesn't require much innovation and kind of entrepreneurial approach. And job providers as I've been given the Indian countries or making India and starting India and all those concepts are encouraged keeping in the that we are going to have more job providers and more successful startups especially in different sectors and sectors. So this journey is still uh, continuing and I hope adequate analytics and insights and data data point from the authentic sources which are to be acted on on a regular basis because it is only change and improvement which is to happen continuously. Because continuous improvement with a lot of agility, with a lot of you know, flexibility and adaptation can only lead to continuous improvement and in terms of features, in terms of product, viability, uh, in terms of value proposition. Because still the product and service are really going to create impact and add value to the common people. It is not a viable solution. It is not a solution which is fitting into the customer needs and requirements. And that is the reason the other top is focusing on the product and service should be problem fit. It should address the core of the reflex of the problem. It should be solution fit. Should be a problem, it should be requirement fit to the market. Then only it can sustain. So, from that perspective, we can have that <coughs> this particular ecosystem needs continuous improvement and a lot of support system by the government and different agencies. It is already in place, but unfortunately, you know, on ground things are sometimes, you know not very, very encouraging and that need another approach to monitor and control effectively and efficiently because through that only each and every person is really um, feeling that yes, he or she is taken care and he or she is encouraged to uh, be an entrepreneur and have a startup journey which is successful. So any journey, any sort of any project needs, uh, it cannot be always smooth, there will be bumpy roads and of course we can say there are barriers and these barriers can be overcome only when 
we are having continuously effective monitoring control system and support system till it is uh, really effective. We cannot is minimize the impact of the negative impact of the barriers, which are great hindrance in the growth of this particular ecosystem. So the conclusion here is that innovation and the startups has to go hand in hand. Apart from that, what we need to have is for enhance success of the startup of the ecosystem in India, we need to handhold innovation which, which are at the school level, at college level, at the university level and at different institutions level because till we handhold the education and the youth how to start with this, why we should because till we are very clear about the why part, the purpose, they know inherent motivation coming to the youth to come forward and contribute effectively. Because they are not clear, they are just thinking that why I should do this, what I will get benefited from. So, it is the responsibility and accountability of all the mentors, or the seniors, to guide, to mentor, and handhold all the youth, all the young students at different levels, so that they are really, very, very motivated for the growth path, end to end roadmap, they are very clear and they have very clear purpose why at all they want to do this and why at all they should do what they are going to achieve and how it is going to individually contribute something, individually add value to and then of course solving the problem and of course again financially we are going to benefit or as a career, as an entrepreneur, as a successful as part of the system or anything. So, with this kind of thought process, it definitely we can think about. So, India's startup landscape has emerged as a global powerhouse built by young tech-saving population, which includes middle class growth and government initiative like Startup India. Vibrant hubs and smaller cities are driving innovation across sectors, attracting venture funding, means venture capital funding as well as angel industry funding and crowdfunding, different sources. But the only thing is, the venture capitalists or angel investors are not only supporting financially, they are also supporting as a mentorship, as a upskilling, because they are the subject matter experts. Because their expertise, along with the funding, is really going to help the new startup ecosystem. So what they need to before funding, they have to be convinced with the charisma. They have to be uh, very much justifying that yes, this particular idea, which was started from some problem solution concept, it's really viable. And the prototype and now the improvised final product is really marketable, the sellable, and really going to address problem solution of the people of the society. So from that perspective, the social factor or the human factor element is also part of the entire entrepreneurial journey. Because it is not only just profit making. Entrepreneurship is not just a profit making concept. It has to solve the problem of the people of the society and in inherent profit will automatically by default. The only thing is once we have the long term vision in a very broader aspect, in a very clarity. So automatically, the journey is long-term, the journey is sustainable, and of course, we can really create a difference on the ecosystem. Not only in India, uh, we can be uh, contributing to the global landscape also. Because innovation and entrepreneurship, and of course, the startups, they are all across the globe. There are so many countries which are far ahead than in India, but yes, at the same time, since we have the youngest youth population largest across the nation, I mean, across the world, definitely we have tremendous potential of talent which can contribute to the best of the world. The only thing is, 
they had a right skill set and mindset is groomed because the group population definitely they can't contribute. So there lies the you know support system by all the higher education institutions. At the same time, the teachers, the mentors, the mentors from the industry and public, and there should be a close net, continuous relation building and connect from the industry and academia. Then only, of course, we can say that the real you know, talent is taken care of and holding, and of course they are going to be ready to contribute to this innovation and startup ecosystem, which is really having a tremendous potential and possibility to explore and explore. So this is a very, very important aspect. So there are key enablers of this whole innovation and startup include a lot of the right mental, the right skill set, at the same time uh, use of the right technology, adaptation of right technology. Let's say suppose 5G is in place, 6G is already on the way. Okay. And across the globe you see there are certain countries where 6G is already launched. So because technology is disrupting the entire ecosystem, so we cannot ignore technology. So still, you know, we talk about the right skill set is lacking in the because there are a lot of certifications, because there are uh, different institutions, uh, different service providers, but still, uh, the real skill, the hands on skill is still missing. That is the reason the real contribution of the youth for uh, using the technology or applying the technology is really alarming. So, uh, still, my go to complete so many aspects as an enabler, as a mentor, as a guide, as a right skill set uh, developer. Because there are so many talent which cannot afford to have a right skill set that is so costly at times. So there also we have to pitch in that even in the villages or the rural area, there are talents where to pick up and enable them with uh, affordability and value so that that talent also can contribute to the national ecosystem in relation and stuff. So already good initiatives are there, like other tinkering labs and different you know, school level and incubation centers are there and higher education level. But the only thing is that effectiveness and efficiency is still need to be taken care of. And definitely it will be taken care of. Nobody can stop India to be a global innovation group success in the start of the traffic means across the world. And that way it can definitely create a huge impact across the world. So we are at the right path. Only thing is tremendous improvement is required at different levels, be it local, state, region or national level. And also we need to practice the best global practices also. It is not only just whatever we are doing in silos. We have to adopt the global best practices so that we are not reinventing the wheels or we are committing the same mistakes again and again, which are already committed again. So we can save our time and energy by learning from the mistakes and learning from the best practices of the world. So that we are not committing then we are at the right path and right track. And this journey is really meaningful in that system. So there are different policies of the government at different levels which are key enablers and talent development and a lot of collaboration with the cross industries is of course very very important aspect to be taken care of. Adequate infrastructure development is also required. Regulatory norms and uh, funding or investment, these things are also to be eased out in terms of bureaucratic delays and processes. So that definitely will be great in the you know, the ecosystem. So, uh, 
the strategies which are strengthening ecosystem enabler needs, policy refinement, funding diversification and simplification, talent development, and ecosystem collaboration across industries and different sectors. It will be definitely a great enabler at different levels. So with this, I think uh, I'm ending the session based on the enablers which are required for right innovation and the startup ecosystem in India. Uh, thank you so much for your patient listening. And I hope this entire discussion will trigger so many questions and that will definitely uh, finding answers will definitely enable us to further contribute more effectively to the new population. Thank you so much for your basic listening. Thank you. And let me know if at all some questions are there to answer. Thank you once again from the Institutional Innovation Center of anti Management. It was really a great discussion and uh, thank you so much. Thank you.